Hey there everybody, it's Sam here from Samuel Plays Brass. I hope you're all doing well, and today on the channel we're going to be talking about something we don't talk about too much, and that is mutes. So as evidenced by the title for my more reading-inclined viewers, in my left hand today I've got the Yamaha Silent Brass Gen 1, and in my right hand I've got the Yamaha Silent Brass Gen 2. So we're going to be doing an old versus new comparison, a little bit of a frequency analysis and decibel analysis, if you will, and we'll see where it takes us. I've been using the Gen 2, more modern version of the Yamaha Silent Brass for something like three years now, three, maybe four years at this point. I haven't gotten super frequent use out of it because I actually don't enjoy playing on it that much, and sometimes when I need a practice mute, I'll actually just take an adjustable cup mute and squash the cup against the bell for a very similar effect. But I also was able to acquire this Gen 1 just on a complete whim, so I'm, I'm borrowing it for a little bit and I thought I'd compare the two and see how they stack up. Let's have a quick look at each of these mutes. These are both Yamaha's pickup mute for trumpet, just from different eras. They've each got a little place to plug in an interface or headphones, which is neat. Um, and to all intents and purposes, these should function the same way since they are basically the same model. The only difference is this is newer and we're hoping it might have some improvements as a result. Uh, you can see, first of all, it's much smaller than the Gen 1. When you fit it... <sighs> When you fit it into the bell of the instrument, it's pretty much flush against the end. You, at some angles, you can't even see it, uh, which is which is nice because unlike the Gen One, you can pretty much keep the mute in the bell, put it in the case exactly that way, and have no further issues. Obviously, you can't do that with the Gen One, which protrudes a good ooh, I don't know, four inches out of the bell. And it definitely is not going to fit in the case like this. You'll need an extra pocket somewhere to hold it. So I've got two mutes, and I've got two horns behind me. If my math is correct, that means four different combinations we're going to test right here, right now. I apologize if these demos are a little bit hard to hear, because these are practice mutes, and regardless of their time of manufacture, they are pretty good at their jobs. So, in any case, at least for this portion of the video, I really advise using headphones. So purely from a player's experience perspective, what do I think of these two? Obviously I'm much more familiar with the modern variant since I've had one for years and this is just something I have borrowed on a fluke, but what I notice between the two is the modern variant is a little bit more responsive to the player in a couple of ways. It has better feedback in terms of articulations, you feel like you're articulating the notes, not just kind of, kind of th'ing your way through them. Uh, whereas this definitely has some rounder attacks that make it a little bit harder to start the notes. Uh, the Gen 2 also has a little bit more feedback in terms of dynamic range, not necessarily just louder and softer in terms of literal volume or decibel count, but actually more like it still retains the trumpet's intrinsic ability without the mute to sort of change tone qualities at the different volumes you play. You can still feel the trumpet light up when you play Shostakovich on this versus on this, it just feels a little bit dead. Um, what I do notice is just the, the smaller the smaller variant has a little bit more octave misalignment, and I'm going to show you what that means in the next clip. We're going to play a middle C and a low C on each mute, and then I'll play them back to you together. We'll see if we find anything interesting. Firstly, the Gen 1. And secondly, of course, the Gen 2. As I said, I'll play them back to you together. What I did for each of those notes is to just try and blow down the horn and center them where the mute wanted them on the horn at that particular time. 
And what you'll notice is some pretty stark results. The smaller, modern variant does get really, really sharp in the lower register. A lot of people have complained about it, I've complained about it at length, um, and it's led a lot of people to actually believe that they should play the old version, they should not touch the newer version. The trouble is, no practice mute is perfect, and the nature of the beast for any of these or any other brand is that there are going to be some very interesting idiosyncrasies in terms of intonation. Practice mutes can have a tendency to sort of compress the harmonics where the lower end comes up and the higher end comes down, or, for instance, both extremes seem to go up. Uh, and in general, the pitch center on the smaller variant is a little bit higher, not by too much, than on the larger variant, the older one. So, like I said, the nature of the beast is no practice mute is perfect, but the intonation qualms of the smaller one have led some people to believe that the newer one or the smaller one is actually worse than the older one. I personally don't see too much benefit in the old variant besides the low C maybe being a little bit more in tune. It definitely can still be sharp if you allow it to be. There's still a little bit of lipping that has to happen and, um, you know, both of those, th those mutes both run sort of an equal risk of being really sharp in the lower register. What I found is that the older one is a little bit more forgiving in that aspect, but we also talked about how the newer one just has much better response and feedback with the player, and so I, I don't think I belong to the Gen 1 cult, if you will. So as you can see to my right, I've got a basic decibel meter installed on my iPad. I've learned that the room has about 30, 35, maybe 40 at times decibels of just ambient noise. My talking level tends to sit around there, you know, 60, 70, depending on how comfortably or how loudly I talk. And so what we're going to do with that information is we're going to take each of these silent brasses, play a not-so-silent note on each of them, and we're going to see how they stack up. Firstly, the Gen 1. And secondly, the Gen 2. It is in the bell, it's just hard to see from this angle. So with those results, we see that the Gen 1 at a quiet volume is about my soft speaking volume, and when I really push it, it's a little bit louder than I generally talk. The Gen 2 is a little bit softer on average. It actually, at a quiet volume, is hardly more than a whisper for me, and uh, when, I, when you really push it, then it's about as loud as I generally talk. What's interesting is that to the listener, the Gen 2 might sound louder, and we're going to explore why that is. In this clip, if you're able, take a look at the actual spectra and where the frequencies lie with each mute. Firstly, the Gen 1. And secondly, the Gen 2. So now we've had a look at both of these mutes from a listener perspective, from a player perspective, and, and threw in a little bit of nerdier, mathier stuff for all you more analytical heads out there like me. And the verdict is, this really comes down to personal preference as to which silent brass you're going to prefer. If you find the low C absolutely unusable on the newer variant, sure, you might find a little bit more success with the older one, but also you have to understand the risk you take with the older one and that it provides, in my opinion, a less accurate assessment of your technique in playing, of your articulation, of your tonal tendencies, etc. It just kind of rounds everything off. The frequencies being concentrated mostly in the middle and much less on the upper end really means that you're not hearing your articulations as well or seeing the, the nuances of your tone. So that is my reasoning for still preferring the newer one. Despite all the complaints I've had about it over the years, I'm realizing, and it's good to be able to put this into perspective, that I really do prefer the newer one. Again, it's personal preference. Feel free to let me know of your preference, especially if you've tried both down in the comments below. This has been a really fun video to do. I'm glad to get to put these side by side for a little bit and see just what it is I was missing out on or not missing out on. And with that, thanks so much for tuning in to Samuel Plays Brass today. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you have, consider liking it down below or checking out my playlist in the top right corner in the card. You'll find more gear comparisons there. If you've made it this far, I mean, it's been a while, you probably liked it at least a little bit, right? Consider subscribing down below if you're not already. A lot of my usual viewers aren't, and that's the best way to find my content. Again, it's a small gesture with a huge impact on the channel, so if you're not subscribed, I hope you'll stick around and I hope to see that change. Thanks again so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.